A user by the name of John Doe has commented on one of my videos on the um, coming ban of Quran burnings in Denmark. And he's asking if I'd be willing to um, add English subtitles to that video. And it makes sense. It really does. It's uh, actually a very good idea. However, things are moving so fast in regard to, um, to this coming ban. So I decided to uh, do one thing better, namely to make a video in English. It's a kind of a walk through uh, this ban. So strap on your seatbelts and get ready because it's going to be a wild ride. There's something rotten in the Kingdom of Denmark. On July 30th, our Foreign Minister Lars Løkke Rasmussen declared war on Koran burnings. He stated in an interview with Danish radio that Koran burnings in front of what he called foreign embassies are in conflict with Danish interests and a threat to the safety of us all, meaning the Danish people. Therefore, he had put um, legal professionals on overtime to come up with a, some kind of legal tool to prevent Quran burnings um, in front of these um, foreign embassies, not to be confused with non-foreign embassies, I suppose. Foreign Minister uh, Lars Lukas Rasmussen also stated that this would in no way compromise free speech. He argues that free speech is not um, unlimited. And he says that burning the Quran in front of one of these uh, foreign embassies or burning the Torah scroll uh, in front of the Israeli uh, embassy serves no other purpose than to mock. I'm not sure why the Israeli embassy is not uh, considered a foreign embassy, but well... The foreign minister's argument is therefore that because he and the uh, government um, as a whole find Quran burnings in front of foreign embassies unworthy of free speech, it should be banned. Go figure. But it gets even worse because on August the 3rd, our Prime Minister Mitte Frederiksen stated in several articles that it is not an uttering to burn books. Something is getting lost in translation here, so let me explain. What in English is called free speech is in Danish called uttering freedom. Uttering is uh, more broad than speaking, and utterings can both be written, uh, spoken and shown. For example, an artwork can be an uttering, even though there are no words spoken or written. By stating that burning books is not an uttering, she is really saying that burning books is not within the protection of free speech. By making this distinction, she's trying to circumvent the purpose of free speech. So instead of deeming uh, certain utterings unworthy of being protected, she tries to completely remove a certain way of expression from being protected. But it gets even worse. At the end of August, the Justice Department publicized the text they'd come up with during their massive overtime. And September the 1st, our Justice Minister, Peter Hummelgaard, proposed a ban on, get ready for this, inappropriate treatment of objects of significant religious importance to a religious community. Try saying that ten times fast. The basics of the proposed bill is to place it under Chapter 12, um, under the Penal Law. The title of Chapter 12 in the Penal Law is Treason and Other Crimes Against the State's Independence and Security. Yep, that is what it says. Burning the Quran, if this bill passes, will now be a matter of treason and crimes against the independence and security of the Kingdom of Denmark. Please pinch me. There's something extremely rotten in the Kingdom of Denmark if burning a book is considered to be on the level of treason. 
we're not even talking about our constitution here. In fact, you can burn our uh, constitution if you want, even after this bill is being passed. The government proposes this to be placed under paragraph uh, 110E, which is about mocking flags or national symbols of other countries. For example, you're not allowed to burn the American flag. The penalty will be anything from a fine and up to two years in prison. The way they worded this bill is absolutely crazy. It says, in the same way, whoever is guilty of inappropriate treatment of an object with substantial religious significance for a religious community or an object that appears as such publicly or with the intention of spreading it in a wider circle is punished. Now, there are several questions that are actually just screaming to be asked. One, what is inappropriate? Two, what is included in the ban and who decides? Three, when does an object appear to be the object in question? Now, the first question is answered in the motivational paper sent out uh, by the Justice uh, Department. It says, actions whereby these objects are destroyed in a disparaging or derogatory manner or are otherwise physically treated disparaging or uh, derogatory. So, it's not only destruction, but any kind of treatment considered to be disparaging or derogatory. In the motivational paper, they give some examples. Burning, soiling, stepping on, kicking, tearing apart, cutting in or stabbing. However, this calls for yet another question. What does it take to soil the Quran? For example, the politicians have been asked about covering the Quran in the LGBT plus flag, but they won't answer. Instead, they are disclaiming responsibility and pointing to the courts to make that judgment. How about serving hot dogs inside a Quran? Or what would happen if I, as a Christian, even touched the Quran? According to Surah 98.6, Christians are considered to be the worst of all creatures. So, maybe just a Christian touching the Qur'an would soil it. What about touching the Qur'an without washing hands first? Or, to give an example very close to home for me personally, is it soiling the Qur'an that I've made notes in a Qur'an with a pen? What is included? Well, the motivational paper from the Justice Department clearly states that the fact that an object is used for religious reasons or as part of religious practice is not in itself sufficient for the object to be covered. The paper even mentions articles of clothing as not being included. However, it's worth noting that the judgment call of what is to be included in this ban is up to a religious community. In other words, any physical object that the Muslim community in Denmark even considers to be of substantial religious significance would be included in this ban. And I'm not the only one who says this. The president of the Deputy Judges Association Nina Pelisa Bunde was interviewed by Jonathan Spang in the satirical TV show Close to the Truth. Let's hear what she says. Hvem tror du kommer til at beslutte, hvad der har væsentlig betydning for et trosamfund? Jamen man er nødt til nok at rådføre sig med religiøse forkyndere. Altså det er vel det bedste sted at få svar på, hvad der er vigtigt for dem, hvilke symboler der er mest væsentlige. Det lyder som et stort arbejde. Nina Bunde confirms what I just said. It is up to the religious community in question to decide what is included and what is not. 
even though the motivational paper clearly states that clothing articles are not included. And that brings us back to the previous question on what is considered to be um, inappropriate treatment of such an object. If the religious community gets to decide what is included, is that also the case for deciding which actions should be considered inappropriate actions? Well, the motivational paper states that treatments that would generally be inappropriate may also, depending on the circumstances, fall outside the criminal area as a result of special customs regarding the treatment of the religious object in the religious community in question. So, if the Muslim community has certain customs regarding the object that would normally be considered inappropriate, it may not be considered inappropriate. The question is, does that work the other way around as well? I mean, if the Muslim community considers a certain action to be inappropriate treatment of the Quran, would it then be considered inappropriate? No one knows. Another important thing to notice is that the motivational paper makes it clear that it will have no effect on the application of the provision whether it is a whole object or parts of an object, including damaged objects. So, the ban also includes parts of the object in question. In other words, burning, ripping apart, trampling on, stabbing or kicking a few pages of the Quran is also prohibited. This again raises an important question. When is a part big enough to be considered a part of the object. For example, if I print um, on a page a specific verse of the Quran, is it then a part of the Quran? Or maybe just half a verse? Or even a word? In that case, any newspaper, book or other kinds of written material in which there are words that are also included in the Quran, well, these may be included in the ban. Total confusion. How are the courts even going to make a judgment on issues that are specifically religious issues, not legal issues? Even the politicians who are pushing to get this crazy law uh, passed have absolutely no clue whatsoever about what they're fiddling with. For example, the motivational paper talks about the Bible, the Quran and the Torah. But listen, the Torah is in the Bible, like the rest of the Tanakh, which is not even mentioned. When the justice minister was asked if uh, burning crosses as part of the show during a heavy metal concert. He stated that burning a cross, and you might want to sit for this because this is crazy. He said, burning a cross would not be a problem, but burning a crucifix would be a problem. As the politician who asked this question, uh, Stefan Larsen, so eloquently put it, the difference between the two is not obvious to me. Well, Stefan, you are not alone. There are many other things I could bring up in this video, but for now you should be at least somewhat up to date with the fact that there's something rotten in the Kingdom of Denmark.